Hey there, Internet. Today I wanted to review the Intel Arc A7070 GPU. I'm going to compare it against a comparably priced RTX 3070. And uh, I'm going to try to make this pretty quick. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the pros. What are the pros? Well, the first pro is it has an attractive design. It looks good. It's also very small, I would say, relative to the Asus Tough 3070, it's uh, it's substantially smaller, and it fits into my case much easier. The tough 3070, I actually had to change my case, and then the the only other case that I had that would fit, there's almost zero clearance for the 3070 card. So on the size and design front, the A770 wins hands down. The next positive I'll point out is the AV1 support is very good. It's fast, but not always fast. For the most part, it was able to encode 4K content very quickly. There were some situations that I ran into where it didn't do a great job as far as speed, but unfortunately in DaVinci Resolve, there's no other way to encode AV1. Uh, you have to have a Intel Arc card or a new 40 series NVIDIA card in your machine to get AV1 encoding capabilities. Now, that's not to say you can't get AV1. You can you can output to another format and then use Handbrake or something else to transcode it into AV1. The AV1 file sizes are substantially smaller, so there's a pretty big benefit if you want to reduce the storage for your video content or you want to speed up your uploads. Now, the overall user experience, I have to say, was... Good. Uh, my card, the, the reason that I actually went on the journey to try to pick a new video card was the R9 Nano that is now six years old and is no longer being supported by AMD was getting a little long in the tooth. Now, that card still was actually doing pretty well. I mean, you could do plenty of stuff with it and uh, it was able to not be the worst thing in the universe. But I wanted to upgrade. I saw the Secondary market is you use video cards as being attractive after the post crypto boom bust cycle, and uh, so that's why I started to look into upgrading my video cards. So generally, I, everything I would say is pretty much a good experience, although there was definitely some cons. But um, the re, the DaVinci Resolve timeline editing seemed very very responsive. Now I ran the DaVinci, the Puget Systems DaVinci Resolve benchmark, and it got a very similar score. The A770 got a very similar score to my old uh, R9 Nano, which was very surprising based on the just what, what the timeline editing felt like. It felt much more responsive than the R9. So there must be some other things that Puget systems is measuring that they're not giving such a great score to the a770 one and it's important to note that it did not benchmark uh av1 encoding or av1 video processing uh anywhere in the benchmark as far as i can tell so they're they're not actually looking at that as far as the overall score they're providing it's i think it's mostly weighted towards h.264 the final pro i'll say is related to the fact that i'm not going to keep it uh, the resale market right now, as of this very moment, which is the 11th of November, 2020, the resale market's very good. And so I'll actually be able to sell the card for more than I paid for it. I'll be able to keep the software bundle, which uh, has a few things in it that aren't terrible. And uh, hopefully I can turn that around very quickly so that the process of me trying this card out was a uh, zero risk process. So I, I think that was very good. So now on to the cons. What were the things that I didn't like about this card? Well, the main thing is the performance uh, lags the 3070 substantially, particularly in, in the game that shipped with the card that I bought, which is uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 version 3, or I don't even know what you really should call it. And the naming for that particular game is terrible. The experience in that game particularly with just the default settings that it loads, was so much better with the 3070. It's pretty mind-blowing. The second area I'll point out is that the there's a bug in the driver where if you have two monitors plugged in and you have a fairly high refresh rate, you're going to get 40 watts of standby power consumption, even if you go through and follow the Intel instructions to enable the ASPM L1 capability in, in your operating system. 
simply the fact that there's a second monitor with a different refresh rate. It may, I, who knows what it's related to exactly, but the power, the power goes from about eight Watts up to 40 Watts as soon as you have that second monitor plugged in. So I would say that's a huge negative. One of the things that initially attracted me to the card was the software bundle. And I, I have to say that the productivity side of the software bundle is mostly garbage. The software is not perpetual licenses. There are trials and subscriptions. And even the one thing that's not a subscription, which is Gigapixel, it, it only does one thing. It, it like there's, <laughs> it's very limited in functionality. You could probably find something on Git, GitHub that, that does almost as good. And, uh, it didn't even work with the A770. I mean, it crashed. Uh, I was not able to actually complete any AI-driven resolution enhancements with the software. It worked with the NVIDIA card, but with the Intel card, it was not actually able to run and crashed every time I started it up. So that was a huge disappointment. Now, while the AV1 encoding in Resolve was good, the H.265 encoding actually didn't work. Resolve would quit the export with an error and no H.265. So I couldn't even compare the output of AV1 versus H.265 without swapping the card. Very disappointing. The support with respect to machine learning and uh, AI software was very limited. PyTorch is Linux-only support, and while you can sort of run Linux within Windows, there's issues with Windows 10 and the amount of uh, RAM that you can allocate to the WSL uh, hypervisor supported version of Linux, you're very limited in what you can do. The libraries don't seem to do, they're not taking the approach of AMD, which is to try to leverage CUDA as much as possible and then have a compiler uh, hardware abstraction thing that lets you use CUDA code. They're, they're, it's very confusing. There's like 16 different tools. Doesn't None of it makes any sense. So I think from a machine learning perspective, uh, you're, you're much better off sticking with an NVIDIA card just because the, they have, I mean, they're so dominant. All the software supports it, and there's no weird uh, dependency issues or compatibility issues. The Whether you're on Windows or Linux or Mac, Mac it doesn't seem to matter. And so I, I think the... You know, the, the newness of all of Intel's machine learning libraries was a big negative. The final negative was really a very difficult to diagnose issue if you didn't have the ability to RDP into your Windows machines. When I set the card up, it booted. Everything was great. I installed a driver. Everything was great. Uh, I tried to optimize the BIOS to get the benefits of power savings. And when I did this, I turned on an option called SVM, which is shared virtual memory, which is uh, supported in my BIOS. And uh, the machine, while it would post, would just it would boot with a blank screen. So it wasn't like a blue screen. It was just a blank black screen. And you can't tell what's going on at all. After you RDP into the machine, you can see that the driver initialization failed. And then if you look in the Windows logs, you can see that there's some H, there's some hypervisor, uh, Hyper-V related uh, uh, issues, which kind of clued me into, oh, maybe I should undo that setting, which I did, and then everything booted correctly. But this is a known issue, and uh, I think it probably has caused quite a lot of pain for people who had this turned on or turned this on in the BIOS, and then, you know, they literally can't get any output from their card without understanding how to access their machine through the network via RDP, they weren't actually able to troubleshoot the card. So that's my experience with this card, the pros and cons. Uh, the ultimate result is that I'll be selling it on eBay. I'll be keeping the 3070 until either the 4 Series NVIDIA cards come out with something closer to a 3070 in price in the $400 range or uh, AMD launches something. And the big risk with AMD is you have a lot of these similar cons, particularly with respect to programming and machine learning and AI. Uh, the tooling is just not as easy to use and as pervasive and as compatible as the, as the NVIDIA tooling ecosystem for, for a bunch of that stuff. For gaming, it's great. For productivity, not so much, right? So, you know, I think Intel has an opportunity here 
particularly with respect to productivity, I think they could potentially compete with NVIDIA if they can, if they can continue to get the tool, you know, the tooling, the productivity tools vendors to support their stuff. They have to remove some of the rough edges and pretty much make it transparent to the end user. And if they were able to do that for 80% of the use cases, I think they're going to win a bunch of business because there's the, the entry level for the Intel Arc is 140 bucks, and the entry level for an NVIDIA AV1 capable card is it's is is a million. It might as well be a billion bucks because they don't have anything that's entry level. the lo- The lowest card they have is a thousand dollars, pretty much. So I think Intel has a, a good product. It's not quite ready yet, but it, the next iteration will be very competitive with NVIDIA, and I think they're onto something good. So if I were to have to do this all over again, I would probably just go ahead and buy a 3080 card and then run two cards in my machine. It's the cheapest way to get AV1 hardware encoding support, and uh, while I haven't done it yet, it seems like it's the right way to go. Now, there may be compatibility issues uh, with doing that, but the cost savings is so substantial, it's probably worth a try. So it's the only way you're going to be able to get this uh, for under $140. That's my Intel Arc A770 video card review, even though I don't ever review video cards on this channel. But thanks for watching. Bye.